So in a previous video, we've derived the values for sine, cosine and tangent of 30, 45 and 60 degrees. In this video, we'll plot this entire table in the first quadrant of the unit circle and then we'll use these results to find sine, cos and tan for other angles of the unit circle. So here I have a unit circle. A unit circle is simply a circle with a radius r equal to one unit. It is a very very useful tool in trigonometry and in the studies of periodic motion and you'll see it time and time again in mathematics and physics problems. So it's worthwhile learning about. And being a circle, of course, it goes through a full revolution in 360 degrees. And just a word on convention, when we describe angular motion or we're measuring angles, the positive direction is always counterclockwise and we always start from the angle zero on the right hand side of the horizontal line. So we start at zero through 90 degrees to the vertical through to 180 degrees to the opposite side of the horizontal down to 270 degrees to the opposite side of the vertical and to 360 degrees to complete the full circle. Now sine, cosine and tangent as well as being trigonometric functions, these are also known as circular functions because every single point on this unit circle can be described in terms of these functions of an angle. Alright, so to explain that better, let's start with the angle of 30 degrees. So let's say that the ray from the center of the circle to this point on the circle is at 30 degrees with respect to the horizontal. Well with this radius Let's construct a triangle and we can do that simply by projecting a vertical line down from where it touches the circle onto the horizontal line and from the center to the end point of this new blue line. So we'll construct a right angle triangle and previously we've derived the result that the cosine of 30 degrees is equal to the square root of 3 on 2. And with cosine being defined as the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse and the hypotenuse being equal to the radius of 1 in this case. This of course means the side adjacent to the angle is equal to root 3 on 2 units in length. Okay, so the base of the triangle has a length of root 3 on 2 units. The same applies for the height because we've learned previously that sine of 30 degrees is equal to one half and with sine being the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse of one the opposite side or the height of the triangle is equal to one half. Okay, so the triangle has a height of a half. Now if we consider this horizontal line as the x-axis and the vertical line as the y-axis, we can consider this root 3 on 2 as the x-coordinate of this point on the circle and we can consider this one half as the y-coordinate. So we say that the cosine of an angle always refers to the horizontal position of a point on the circle and the sine of the angle always refers to the vertical position or coordinate on the unit circle. Well now where does tan come into it? Well tan will describe the gradient of this radius for this particular angle of 30 degrees. So the gradient which is equal to the tangent because the tangent is the opposite side divided by the adjacent side and the gradient is also defined as how far we go up divided by how far we go across and we already know that the tan of 30 is equal to 1 on root 3. Let's clean things up a little bit before we move on. Now for 45 degrees we follow the same convention. So the coordinates of a point on the circle that is at 45 degrees with respect to the horizontal is given by the cosine of 45 degrees 
comma sine 45 degrees cosine of 45 degrees was equal to root 2 on 2 and the sine of 45 degrees is also equal to root 2 on 2 and we do the exact same thing to show where cos of 60 degrees and sine of 60 degrees lie on the unit circle so cos of 60 is equal to 1 half and sine of 60 is equal to root 3 on 2 All right, now for zero degrees. It should be obvious that the coordinates are one comma zero. Okay, here we have not left the x-axis, so the y-coordinate is zero, and the circle intersects the x-axis, and with its radius being one, so we have the coordinate of one on the x. And as with every point, this is also equal to cosine of the angle zero, and sine of the angle zero for the x and y, components respectively. Similarly for 90 degrees the Cartesian coordinates here are 0, 1 and thus the cosine of 90 degrees is equal to 0 and the sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1. And the tangent at each of these angles are at 30 we have 1 on root 3 at 45 degrees we have the tangent equals 1, the gradient equals 1, and at 60 degrees the gradient or the tangent is equal to square root of 3. On the horizontal the tangent is equal to 0, and on the vertical tangent is equal to, well if we think about it here, we're going straight up on the y and we're not going across by any in the x, so therefore the gradient would be undefined and we use an infinity symbol to represent that. Okay, so as I've said, we've populated the first quadrant of the unit circle with the data in our table, but now can we use the unit circle to find the sine and cosine of angles that are bigger than 90 degrees? Well, let's find out. Suppose that I wanted to find the sine of 150 degrees. Now to calculate this by hand, unfortunately the law that sine of an angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, this law is not valid because we need the angle to be less than or equal to 90 degrees. But still it's possible to find a value for the sine of 150 because sine and cosine are circular functions. And as I said at the beginning, they're called circular functions because every point on this circle can be described as the sine and cosine of an angle. Now the sine of 150 degrees is the y-coordinate of this point. Or we can say that it's the vertical distance from the point to the horizontal. Now if we consider the angle that's supplementary to the 150 degrees. So remember that supplementary angles are two adjacent angles that add up to 180 degrees. We see that this ray is 30 degrees up from the horizontal. So if it's 30 degrees from the horizontal, then this vertical distance is equal to 1 half. So we can say that the sine of 150 is equal to the sine of 30 degrees, which is equal to 1 half. All right, but what about the cosine of 150 degrees? Well, here we're operating in quadrant 2. On the top right, we have quadrant 1. On the bottom left, we have quadrant 3 and on the bottom right we have quadrant 4 and now cosine is all to do with the x-coordinate of this point or in other words the horizontal distance to the vertical and again for an angle of 30 this horizontal distance is root 3 on 2 however because we are in the second quadrant we're in the negative region in terms of x okay so in the first and fourth quadrants we're in the positive x region and in the second and third quadrants we're in the negative x. So cosine of 150 
is equal to negative of the cosine of 30 degrees, which equals negative the square root of 3 on 2. Alright, so generally, for angles between 90 and 180 degrees, so notice this is 180 degrees inclusive, use sine of 180 minus the angle to calculate the sine value, use negative cosine of 180 degrees minus the angle to calculate the value of cosine. Alright, now as an exercise, see if you can find the sine and the cosine of angles in the third and fourth quadrants, say for example the angle of 225 degrees or an angle of 330 degrees using the same method as I've shown you in quadrant number two. Bear in mind in quadrants one and two we are in the positive y region and in quadrants three and four we are in the negative y region. Okay so in quadrant one both cosine and sine should be positive. In quadrant two cosine will be negative and sine will be positive. In quadrant three cosine and sine will be both negative and in quadrant 4 cosine would be positive and sine would be negative. And that will do it for this video. If you found this helpful please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions use the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos that may help you with your homework or assignments. Till next time, best of luck with your studies.